Okay, let's kick off. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining tonight's webinar, um, being an introduction to the Australian Progressives, telling you a bit about our history, our vision, and our organisation. I'm Therese Faulkner, and I'm currently the president of the Australian Progressives. So before we get into our history, our vision and our organisation, I thought you might like to know a bit about me. Um, obviously, the Australian Progressives don't run just with me. We have a, a terrific team and I, um, I follow a succession of terrific party presidents, including Benet Oriconde and Robert Knight. Uh, but I have been president since uh, July this year uh, when I was uh, very happily elected by our members. So a bit about me, my, my professional life. I spent um, a good 30 years in the public service. And I know I don't look that old, but I did join the public service when I was 18 and uh, worked predominantly with the um, Australian Agency for International Development, OVAID, in an international development capacity, um, ending up in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade as a senior executive, uh, working to a few interesting ministers and um, yeah, doing some pretty interesting policy and program related work. I left DFAT, uh, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade back in 2014. And since then I've been working in the private sector in some consulting firms, uh, still engaged in international projects and programs. Um, most of my career I've spent in leadership and management roles uh, and, as I said earlier, international development. I've been on a board for many years, so board director of the International Development Contractors Community, uh, which I enjoy doing in my so-called spare time, and uh, have also spent a couple of years as president of the Canberra International Film Festival, which I, I gave up a couple of years ago personal life, I have many children. So I have three daughters, three grandkids and two stepdaughters. So they, they keep me very, very happy and occupied. Uh, also a bit of a sporty person. So I've done a lot of coaching and playing sport, including soccer, softball, netball, golf, tennis. I gave up my soccer playing career just last year, <laughs> played many years in uh, women's masters soccer, uh, which has been great fun. And yeah, I'd like to keep it and jog hiking, that sort of stuff. And I'm a happy member of the Canberra Raiders um, as well. So, oh, and, and I, I've been on a few quiz shows. So just to keep this a bit personal, that's me with my husband, Andrew, and my sister, Sue, at the Raiders grand final uh, a couple of years ago. That's me and my fabulous soccer team when we took out the minor premiership and the grand final. Uh, that's me and my husband, Andrew, on Pointless, and we did win the highly coveted Pointless Trophy with uh, some nice cash. And this is me on The Chase, uh, which I was also fortunate enough to be on a winning team. And this is my lovely, big, blended, interesting family, my kids, grandkids, stepkids, etc. So why did I join the Progressives? Well, yes, number one, horrified. I was horrified, quite frankly, at the what I saw as the erosion of good government uh, in Australia. And working in international development, you can sort of see what happens when governments are not good, when they're um, eroded by corruption and you know, political favours, that sort of thing. So I was horrified. I thought about becoming an independent, uh, but then I thought, nah. It, it, and it, I mean, independents are good and they have their place, but they're so up to the individual and you're not leaving, you're not working in a team, you don't necessarily leave a legacy behind with a party. So I thought, mm, a party, why don't I just create my own party? So I thought about starting my own party and if I did, it would be a progressive party. But of course, I then Googled progressive political parties in Australia and I found the Australian progressives and I joined there and then. Um, since then, I put up my hand to be a candidate in the 2019 federal election and uh, happily was approved and endorsed to be that candidate for the seat of Bean in the ACT. Uh, contested the federal election, didn't win, but it was a, a great experience. I was also a candidate in the 2020 ACT government elections 
and uh, was part of the Canberra Progressive Steering Committee when we set up and established the Canberra Progressives, uh, was appointed as Vice President of the Australian Progressives um, in 2020, late in 2020, and then elected as President of the Australian Progressives this year. Oh, that's enough about me, honestly. Oh, <laughs> so that's my evil plan for taking over the world. No, not really. This is um, me at the um, ballot draw for the uh, federal election in 2019 and um, out on the... Uh, campaign trail. Actually, this is at um, at the um, um, polling booth. So anyway, about the Australian progressives. So look, back in 2014, when um, the Abbott government was in power, people, as I said about myself, I was horrified, but many people were horrified about the Abbott government policies, particularly on issues such as climate change, asylum seekers, marriage equality, tax system and media ownership. And so there were tens of thousands of people that marched in Australia. There's some pictures here in Sydney, Byron Bay, Melbourne, um, people waving placards that got reported in the press. And so um, this provided impetus for a new political party. It was like, what are we doing? What are the major parties doing for us? This is not good enough. And so the Australian Progressives Party and the Australian Progressives were both formed um, around that time, um, eventually culminating in the registration of Australian Progressives in February 2015. So since 2015, um, many, many things have happened since then. So that was, what, six years ago? Um, I like to say that since the Abbott government, uh, and maybe even before that, if we go back to John Howard, I think there's been a, a political emergency. We do talk about a climate emergency in Australia. But, you know, if you look at political donations and the place of lobbyists in, in our political landscape, we look at the wrought sexual assault, sexual harassment in Parliament House, lack of accountability, lack of transparency, lies, brazen behaviour, lack of ethics, it's all there. There's a political emergency. And so, you know, it's a slippery, slippery slide into um, corruption and a terrible place for people to live. Now, this, this slide didn't take me long to put together, which is saying something, but, you know, we, we had Bronwyn Bishop and her misused travel entitlements and taking a helicopter to a Liberal Party fundraiser We've had the sports rorts Campbell with, with um, the Nationals. We've had um, Christian Porter and his big anonymous donation, which he won't fess up to. We've had controversial grants to uh, organisations without transparency. The National Audit Office um, reports on it, but politicians do nothing. We have the car park rorts and calls for a federal independent commission against corruption. Uh, we've had um, the Brittany Higgins issue in Parliament House. We've had Barnaby Joyce doing a deal uh, with Scott Morrison on um, the COP26 in Glasgow. Um, we've had a political confidence crisis. So um, this is a report that half of the population think that corruption is commonplace. We don't trust politicians. We think they'll lie and they'll get away with it. Um, Gladys Berejiklian in the news recently, and she's been promising to, to fix things for um, a, um, a, her former um, partner, boyfriend, lover, uh, um, about his electric in Wagga, in Wagga Wagga. So there's, there's so much going on. Um, oh, and, and one more, Angus Taylor and Watergate, so um, uh, selling off uh, water, which is um, absolutely a, a terrible uh, piece of corruption. So, oh, and not to mention recently, lies upon lies uh, by our own Prime Minister. So the Australian progressives, what are we doing? Where are we? So I mentioned that we were formed after the March in March um, um, demonstrations in 2014, registered in February 2015. So we were registered as a party. And so since then, we've contested three federal elections. Well, not two federal elections and one by-election. So in 2016, we ran nine candidates in um, eight Senate candidates and one in the House. 2017, the Benelong by-election. 
2019, we fielded five candidates, and 2022, we will be fielding some more candidates. Then we registered the Canberra Progressives uh, in 2020, and we contested the 2020 ACT election with seven candidates, and we'll be contesting the 2024 ACT election. We have very active um, branches in New South Wales. We have an active branch, New South Wales. We will require 750 members in New South Wales to be registered, but that, that is anticipated to happen. Similarly, Queensland, we have an active branch. They'll require 500 to register in Queensland. The purpose of registering in states is to be able to register, uh, is, sorry, to be able to contest state and territory elections. Uh, Victoria, we will need 500 to register, Tassie 100 to register, Western Australia 500, South Australia 200, and in the Northern Territory, they've got some different rules up there. But we're, we're all over the country. We, our membership is uh, currently um, in the 1300, so um, we're, we're, we're getting right up there. Our, our vision. So what we would like is for the Australian Progressives to be an influential force in Australian politics, supported by voters who want to see real change to achieve a fairer and cleaner Australia. And so we like to say we are underpinned, we're guided by, by a set of values. So it's not all about policies, but I'll get to policies in a minute, but um, values are, are very important and all of our members sign up to these. The number one being ethics, so we want our leaders to be people with courage and compassion and integrity and wisdom and self-awareness. Empathy. So this is about having um, compassion and kindness uh, in our society, in our country. Equality. We want to bridge the gap between privileged and underprivileged. Um, evidence. Um, evidence-based policy. We think we can learn from both failures and successes and we, we draw evidence from across the world. Um, so there's Plenty of things we can learn from other countries as well. Engagement and empowerment are both about engaging and empowering people. So in a democracy, we want to be serious about getting people involved in what we do and how we do it. So in three dot points, we aim to reduce inequality. We aim to clean up politics. We aim to plan for the next 100 years. And so those dot points match what we call our three fundamental objectives in the progressives. So one is to end poverty, another is to stop corruption, and another is to take climate action. So on ending poverty, so some of us, I mean, I, I should have mentioned at the beginning of this uh, webinar that I, I live and work in Canberra, which can be you know, we talk about the Canberra bubble and, and being a bit privileged here, but, you know, I've got um, many friends, family, relatives, people who do live in poverty in Australia. And if you look at the Australian Council of Social Services, ACOS, um, they have got some very alarming statistics on the number of people in Australia who live in poverty for a so-called rich uh, OECD country. Um, there are one in four Australian kids threatened by poverty. Um, so in terms of ending poverty, we uh, are looking at all sorts of issues there about what we can do because po politics has the power to end poverty. So we have signed up to a federal job guarantee. We are keen to support a universal basic income. Uh, affordable housing is, um, you know, there's so much unaffordable housing in Australia as we see in the newspapers nearly every day at the moment, but affordable housing helps to end poverty reducing income inequality. So we do see things like um, tax cuts for the already very wealthy people, whereas people on uh, lower wages are still paying uh, proportionately too much tax. Um, First Nations, we can do so much better for closing the gap with our First Nations people, uh, gender equality, and of course, addressing health and education and making that a public good and uh, universal across the country. So ending poverty is one of our, our one of our platforms. Anti-corruption, as I mentioned before, um, look, there's been a lot in the in the press recently about um, this is on the right of the slide, but there's a lot of private money that we know nothing about that's going to the major parties. 
So the uh, Liberal National Party, the coalition, um, in 2018-19 uh, took in $123 million uh, of 20% um, of that was uh, donations that we know about, but 53% of that $123 million is undisclosed. We don't know. It's not transparent. Similarly, with the um, ALP, the Australian Labor Party, 2018-19 uh, took in $77 million. Uh, donations comprised 24% as in disclosed. We, we know that happened, but undisclosed. 36% and other receipts, 40%. So it's um, not transparent. And so we would like, as well as um, seeing a federal ICAC, a federal independent commission against corruption in place, we would like to reform donations policy in politics. We want to see greater transparency. We'd like to see politicians sign up to a code of ethics and code of conduct. We'd like to see more of a level playing field for political parties. And we'd like to see proper proportional representation. Um, a bit more on anti-corruption, um, political donations, of, of the donations that are disclosed, um, there is, there's plenty of reports around that say since 2012, the Liberal and Labor parties have taken in over $100 million from big corporations, including nearly $6 million from resource companies, uh, more than $3 million from big banks, 14 million from property developers and um, a bit under 2 million from energy companies. And so this, this is alarming because um, as was um, widely reported on The Big Deal, which has been on ABC TV over the last couple of weeks and available on iView, um, these corporations, these big businesses, they do not make donations just because they are nice and, and feel kindly disposed towards um, you know politics and democracy it's because they, they they've got something to gain from it and so how how can politicians um, make good decisions uh, on behalf of their constituents on behalf of the, the, the greater good in Australia when their thinking is skewed by money um, I, I'm very proud to say that the Australian progressives have got um, the strictest donation policy in the country. Um, we do not take donations from uh, corporations or business uh, for just that reason. We, we, we happy, happily will take donations from individuals, uh, but not from corporations. And one last thing on, on corruption, as I mentioned before, having worked in international development and I've spent quite a lot of time up in Papua New Guinea um, and in countries like Indonesia and others in Southeast Asia. And I, I have seen with my own eyes, I guess, what, what happens when, we, when a country does not have strong public institutions and when corruption does creep into government and when political favours are, are second nature, um, what happens is that your social and economic indicators uh, go right down. There's, there's poverty, there's disadvantage, there's disquiet, there's um, violence, there's a lot of social, social problems that, that come from that. And I guess many of us watch um, the US with, with, um, with alarm as well when we can see uh, the decline of um, public health systems and healthcare and um, how skewed politics has become because of lobbyists and donations. So anyway, good governance is a bit of a catchphrase in the world of international development. And what does good governance mean? It means you have strong public institutions, you have strong accountability, you have strong transparency, uh, you invest in your public services, you do things for the public good. And um, a friend of mine mentioned the other day that, um, and this rings true from, from the various uh, reading and um, academic papers that are around, that if you have a capitalist or market-based economy, uh, often the incentives are wrong uh, for good public services and good, uh, and, and good equality because um, you're, you're driving that bottom line, you're looking for your lowest possible labour costs, et cetera, et cetera. So those settings are not quite right uh, in a capitalist or market-based economy. 
And so to get those settings right and to make sure that wealth is distributed um, equitably, you, you do need to have regulation. And if you have regulation, you need government. So in fact, you need bigger, not smaller government. Uh, as a former public servant, even though I work in the private sector now and I see a, a place for public uh, sector, private sector, community sector work, um, without a strong public sector, you, you don't get a strong, thriving country. And every time I see um, the major parties uh, boast about making cuts to public servants, uh, it makes me weep because I think what we need is, is a, a stronger public foundation uh, in the country. All right, good governance. Right, and our third fundamental objection, third, sorry, third fundamental objective is uh, on climate action. And so um, I've got a chart there on the right about, uh, this is from the Bureau of Meteorology in the CSIRO in Australia, about global temperatures rising, extreme rainfall, sea level rises, we all know that there's a climate emergency. Um, I think the evidence is, is clear. Um, we in the progressives commit to net zero emissions by 2030, obviously transition to renewables, no new coal mines, green economy, war on waste and protecting the environment. So it's a, it's a big one for us. So there, there are three sort of policy areas, but we have a lot more. Um, so our policies, which you can have a look at on our website, uh, we have them sorted into these 12 categories. So the economy, anti-corruption, climate action, social equality, building Australia's future, education, health, foreign policy and immigration, media, communications and culture, democratic and constitutional reform, science and knowledge and indigenous affairs. So in each of these um, categories, we have quite a list of what our, what our commitments are. We're, we're still developing a lot of our policy um, depth and we're always looking for volunteers to come in and help us work through those policies. But I encourage you to have a look at our website and, and take a look at what we've got there. Now, the word progressive, um, when I was campaigning in both the federal and ACT election, the word progressive can be a bit emotive. Some people just attribute it to being lefty. We are not left, we're not right. We, we are looking at going forward. And in fact, um, we sign up to the word progressive as a dictionary definition, which is that we advocate for progress and change and improvement and reform as opposed to wishing to maintain things as they are. Uh, we want to make progress towards better conditions. We want to have more enlightened and liberal ideas and new and experimental methods. And progressive is characterized by progress and continuous improvement. So that's, that's what the progressives um, are about. Um, as I said, not left, not right, but forward. Uh, and I like to say <laughs> that we are we're, we're green, we're small G green. So we care about climate and environment. But we are also small L labour because we care about workers. We want good conditions for our, our um, labour market and our workers. We're small L liberal because we care about freedom and, and democracy. So we're into justice and fairness and opportunity. So the traditional liberal word, uh, not, not the capital L liberal, which uh, tends to mean conservative in Australia. We're small d Democrats, so we care about democracy. So um, about engaging people in um, running and, and empowering them to have a say in how things happen in our country. And following on with the American um, major party theme, we're also small r Republican because we care about Australia being a republic. So. Um, there's a nice quote here that the Republic is the next natural progression in the evolution of Australia's democracy. So our party objectives, I've talked about our policy and our fundamental uh, objectives, but what, what do we want to do as a party? Well, we'd like to attract more support, so members and volunteers and potential candidates. So we want to run those candidates at local, state and federal level. Uh, so we'd like to have a strong presence in the country. And, and why? Why do we want to have that presence? Well, we want to influence. We want to influence other political players. 
So if we can get influence, the best way to do that, of course, is through winning seats. But we can also influence other political part, other political players and parties by existing and by having a strong membership base and by putting our policy positions out there and by being involved in the political process. So we, we are very keen to be influential. We want to change the direction of Australia for the better, as I've mentioned way too many times, but um, getting us on a, on a path with those values that I talked about earlier. And guess what? I don't do this on my own. <laughs> so um, we have a, a fantastic team. Um, so the Australian Progressives, uh, we have a lot of fantastic volunteers that have busy day jobs, but do you find the time to work uh, with our um, with our federal level party and also at the state levels. So obviously there's me, uh, our vice president is Corey Allen and Secretary Kate Hamley, Treasurer Jamie Benjamin. And then we have a general executive with eight members. Um, so there's just some pictures and names there, uh, but they are fabulous. And we, we meet every month to, to go through um, quite a, a packed agenda. We also have an operations team that looks after policy and communications, memberships and campaigns. So a strong and thriving team there. And we also have, as I mentioned, we're registered in the ACT as the Canberra Progressive. So we have a, an executive group there as well. Um, so an, an executive and some volunteers that keep things ticking over in the ACT. And then we have active branches. So I haven't got everyone's names and photos on here, but we're, we're a, a good, solid political party with some very committed people. So why, why join us? Well, it is easy to whinge. So we um, often hang out with our friends and, and have, a, have a coffee or a beer and, and have a whinge about how terrible things are. It's also easy to get on your device and tweet and, and do that sort of thing. But, you know, to really be involved, um, you, you need to be involved. And democracy means that people can change things. I have this Therese vision of having... Um, many, many thousands of members uh, for the Australian Progressives and, and really starting a, a, a big movement in this country to, to say that we don't put up with what politics is fishing out at the moment, that, that we really have people that want this to change. It's not hard to join the Australian Progressives and we, uh, I've mentioned our great volunteers before, but you don't have to be active. You don't have to volunteer. You can join because by joining, it demonstrates that we've got those numbers. We've got that critical mass of people that are behind what we stand for in terms of our values and the stuff that we would like to see in this country and the stuff that we're not, not willing to put up with anymore. Um, so coming to a close now, but here are uh, a couple of um, www. So one is our website, the progressives.org.au. And if you would like to have a look at joining, progressives.org.au slash join, jump onto our website and, and have a look. But look, that's the end of my presentation. I said it would take half an hour and I'm at 28 minutes. So I'm pretty pleased with that. But look, I've got 15 minutes available for people to um, ask questions. Um, in this webinar format, I believe that you'll need to post questions in the chat. But look, I'll stop sharing my screen now and we'll jump into the chat and see if there's any questions there. And thank you very much for listening and look forward to your questions.